And welcome to Cork tonight. Your host, Graham Craig Root. What an amazing performance from Cena Teal. Thanks so much. Wow, Cena, Rock and Robin. That's it. Available now on iTunes, everybody. Rock and Robin. Thanks so much. Guys, welcome to Cork tonight. Two weeks to Christmas. You can tell by the Christmas day. I thought I got engaged in the Christmas spirit. Guys, tonight's show is sponsored by Verso Fashions. Oh, don't have a soft license. We actually have the boss in the house tonight. <laughs> Energy awareness and guys, O'Brien's garage in Middleton. So there's a man still safe for everyone. Oh, yeah. 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 Thanks, O'Brien. I don't drive. <laughs> no? no? I'll take your one. <laughs> yeah, I'm greedy that way. <laughs> so guys, uh, great panel tonight. Starting Good things off with Gary O'Donovan from O'Donovan's Off Licence. Paul Walsh from Three Little Piggies. The amazing Cena Teal. Hello. Thanks like, for me. We'll hear the voice now. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the voice behind the amazing tunes. Ah, thank you. Yeah, no. You're taking the Irish country music scene by a storm. Ah, oh, you said that, not me. <laughs> no, but I could, well, I'm not seeing it. iTunes is saying it because <laughs> I was on iTunes today and I'm like, Cena, 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 Cena. Is anyone else? So I'm like, no, you're doing really well. So congratulations. I'm Mr. Mike Leeson and Down the Road Productions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all joining me, guys. So, Gary, how are you? I'm very good. So no, like, you can make it. Gary, you pour <coughs> me a glass of wine, but I, I'm a disgrace to like the wine nation because I'm non-educated when it comes to wine. So what are we drinking? Listen, we're drinking uh, Pinot Grigio uh, from Italy, yeah. the home of the Pinot Grigio Grand Friday, and this is a fifth generation family of Zanato. And this is a, um, a wine that they produce, and they produce very, very good style, uh, full of fruit, full of lemon and lime, nice acidity, nice alcohol. Nice finish. And is that available in store at the moment? In O'Donovan's, yeah, it's at 16.99 yeah, no, on promo for Christmas. And there's a perfect um, starter to the Christmas dinner, maybe, you know, like you're having yeah, your lovely. smoked salmon or something like that, or something, seafood or shellfish, something else to go with it is perfect start to the meal. It cleanses the palate and all yeah. that as well. But no, you know, the, the big thing about wine as well, you yeah. said that you, is, is about knowing what you like, though, that's the main thing. See, I've been to like a restaurant and I like would have my meal, and I was like, just okay. traditionally, they had a glass of white wine. Mm -hmm. And then like the lady comes to me and she's like, oh, what kind of white? I'm like, house, the house yeah, wine, yeah, house yeah, wine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I don't have that education okay. there, but yeah. I think maybe I would get the education uh, I, if I, I went to one of your wine classes. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cork Wine School now could do with you and it would do a good good stint for you. Listen, it's no, knowing the product is, means you can enjoy yeah. it better and, and gives you a confidence and all that. But even after tonight, I think you're going to be a little bit more confident, Graham, in definitely. your restaurants over Christmas. No, definitely. I'm looking forward to it anyway. Like, and say so yeah, I did it too. Like I see there's a bottle of red there as well. Yeah. Um, over the Christmas, what, what would that complement? I mean, this, this red wine that we have as well is, is from the same company and it's made in a style that's called a baby Amarone. You know, it's a Valpolicella yeah. uh, on steroids, really. And um, basically, what they do, they reintroduce <laughs> the skins from a previous fermentation batch and increases the alcohol, colour, fruit, and all that. This is the ideal. Like uh, I listen to you know, wine for Christmas dinner, you like know, you really to cut through all the, the flavours and all the bits that's going to be on your plate. This is the red wine that'll, that'll do the trick for you. 
like I listen sure. to you now, and like you talk about wine with such passion. Mm -hmm. Where did like this passion come from? Yeah, I suppose um, I started studying about studying wine about thirty years ago, um, and uh, and f went through the WSET system and uh, started travelling probably about twenty eight years ago, and uh, I've been all over the world a couple of times with it, I suppose, and uh, have built up a lot of relationships with buyers etc and uh, yeah it's something I've lecturing on for the last 20 odd years as well oh, and I'm, I'm a wine buyer as well as, as part of my job so uh, yeah I'm, I'm passionate about it because I love it. And, and yeah uh, I see O'Donovan's he actually held a fair recently didn't we he? We did yeah we had uh, one, of the, one of the biggest ones yeah in the, in the country uh, took place in the first week of November in the Clayton in the city centre and we had over 600 people there and uh, 40 stands 400 wines loads of craft beer and spirits and all that so there was a real you know, quest for knowledge out there amongst people and people want to learn more because they realise that when they learn more they can enjoy the product better And as I think well. it's a lot of people want stuff now to complement their food as well. Yeah, very much, so like, yeah. I, like you, you see now, like, to go with a dish, like even st you have your starter in a restaurant, yeah, yeah. there's a wine that they would recommend and yeah. wine has become a way now to get the best out of food as well. Yeah, I suppose the original design of wine was to have with food as well yeah. back centuries ago and all that, so it's still for to this day. The Pinot Grigio you can have by itself, but of course it's, it's going to be great with when you match it with a, a right dish like a seafood or shellfish. Likewise, the, the Rapassa and the Red uh, would be a big style that's silky smooth and powerful and yet it will go with everything that's on your Christmas dinner plate or anything beef or lamb or whatever as well and they just it enhances the the experience of both you know oh, so exactly. it's all about getting it right and, and having something better at the end when you, if you combine them you know? well, like we touched on craft beer there that's mm. another thing that's become yeah. very it's Huge, a great yeah. trend in Cork at it's the moment it's great yeah local craft uh, breweries as well which is great and you know it's 16 percent in the states you know we're at four percent here or something so we've a long way to go you know but uh, we're finally, uh, or we're certainly uh, embracing it, and there's loads of new product, loads of new uh, brewers, and a lot of innovation going on. So it's really exciting time for the craft brewing industry, and of course, this micro distilling industry yeah. in Ireland as well. It's a, it's a fascinating time from 10 years ago when there was nothing. Now we have this burgeoning industry, which is great. And overall, like I guess I'm so used to like, going through the city, maybe if I'm in the city or if I'm coming out here now to yeah. Blackpool. I see O'Donovan's, but yeah. overall, how many is there? Yeah, we have nine stores yeah, throughout yeah. the city and county, yeah, so we're, you know, south for, side as far as Carrigan Line. City centre, of course, is our flagship branch. Please call in, I'll be there, of course, <laughs> a lot. And, uh, oh, that's good. And, and, like, this is a crazy time of year for yeah, like, it is, Christmas. Yeah, it's, it's like the harvest for us. It's like picking the grapes, you know. Yeah. We're actually selling the wines, really, after the harvest. <laughs> that was on a couple of months ago. But it is, like, that important to the drinks industry. So, uh, yeah, it's a big couple of weeks ahead of us now. And say, were you... Say when Charles and Camilla visited, were you behind yeah. all the cases no, of wine no, that went no, to them? No, I, I, I wish, I wish, yeah. you know, I'd like to, like to have been the person, but I believe they had something, some nice reds and whites there. They didn't hold back on the cost and all that. No, exactly. I would have loved to supply that. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, like, well, I know. I thought you did the wine, and Paul did the food. Yeah, well, oh, we, we, I well, wish. We wish yeah. Yeah. I, I did the tunes. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> did the tunes. Eh? Two hundred seventy-five quid a head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by, I just by that alone. I'm just going to move on because I can see that I see I well I happen to give our friends on Facebook so I seen it today when I was on my lunch but like that really triggered a reaction of you to say Paul. It did um, it just again it's the politicians which local politicians this time which like starts and spending again of our, of our budget you know last year the city hall had to plug a budget deficit of 1.2 million their answer to that was put up the rates on Everybody that has uh, premises like mm -hmm. O'Donovan's, myself, and the, the coffee shop. But yet they can turn around and spend over 275,000 in Prince Charles. And like there was, if I don't know if you saw the list, there was 6,500 spent on polishing doorknobs. I'm sorry, you know, like, but <laughs> that's a bit ridiculous. Um, there, were, there were probably a few rusty doorknobs. In the well, I don't know. There was another 11,500 spent on deep cleaning offices. Um, yeah. Like, did they not have cleaners or did they not clean but all like, the time? Do you not think some positive will come from it? Like, the English market, would they have seen a trade, an increase in trade now because people have seen both the Queen there, they've seen Charles and Camilla come uh, there. Yeah. So I, surely some good will come to the city. I did. I, I saw it in the city centre myself when I was in the Tom and Bar originally when the Queen did visit Cork City. After, there was a huge influx of tourism into Cork City. Um, Extreme Ireland, uh, Paddy Wagon, they all started bringing day tours into the Cork City centre, particularly into the English market. So she did big time. I don't think Charles would uh, have much of an impact on, on Cork that the Queen had, but she definitely did put Cork on the map for tourism. Definitely. And tell me, Paul, the mastermind behind Three Little Piggies. 
Oh yes. If I'm if someone's in the city and they really want to get the true little piggy experience, how do they get there? Where is where are you located? It's on Union Quay, directly across the way from the School of Com. School of Commerce. So School of Com, you stand at School of Com, look across the river, we're just on the corner. So it's an idea Sorry. spot to go before a bus journey. It is indeed, or if you're going to the School of Music or heading to her city hall, that direction. But we're, in your case, it's like the D spot for um, any member from the RT studio to pop over. We can... have all of our T <laughs> regulars, thanks for, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, they, they like us, they like our product, you know. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of staff from the School of Music. There's a lot of offices around the place. Would you believe when I researched this, walking Sullivan's Quay, down Union Quay, back up Ankeny Street, South Terrace and Copley Street, there's 6,500 people on my doorstep and that's between workers, offices and everything like that. You'd, people don't look overhead the buildings, there's offices all over the place. No, it, it's a very, especially the, the more uh, kind of companies that are coming to Cork at the moment, the, build, the higher up the buildings yeah. are going to get because for it's, apartments and yeah, it's a big student. A it's a big view. student hub now as well, where you've got the School of Com, you've got the School of Music, UCC have the uh, Cork Savings Bank now, the old Cork Savings Bank, uh, St John's, so there's a big, it's a big student hub around the area as well, you know. I we were chatting over the weekend because I was in Barcelona, guys. So I uh, went over for my birthday, but I like, just from kind of chatting to you over the weekend, like you are Mister Travel because you've done all around the world and you spent a couple of duration of time yeah, in each destination yeah, I lived, as well. I lived in Paris, Brussels, Alicante, Marbella. So I did a lot of travel. I love Spain yeah. actually. I spent my longest period of time was Spain. I was there for seven years. I loved it. Mm. And when I was there, I did a lot of traveling around and got to see the real Spain, you know? Yeah. So I traveled everywhere from Santander down to Gibraltar, to Linton Brett, the country. You're not really into the rugby at all, are you? Oh, I love rugby. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got that now from social media and everything <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah. Like, I wouldn't have gathered that you're a rugby fan at all. I was due to go to the game Sunday, but I was only recovering from the flu, so I gave my tickets away. But, uh, no, a big rugby fan. Yeah, and is there much rugby stuff on over the Christmas? Yes, there is. Uh, Munster just uh, beat cast this weekend. We're away to uh, the coming weekend. Um, you'll have the Pro 14 will be on again. We'll be meeting Leinster, I think, maybe on Stevens' day. So mm. there's lots happening. Very good. Lots Very happening. Good. Guys, did you see the I'm a Celebrity over the weekend? Did you see the final of that? Mm -hmm. No. No? Are we no <laughs> reality TV people? Yeah. Yeah. That's no. Like, yeah. no. How much you did? No, you did. did yeah. And what did you carry right now? Oh, yeah. As it was good, huh? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I think it was uh, from the answer that it looked like he was kind of walked away with it. He seemed to come across the... really well and no, he exactly. seemed to be a nice fella and keep to keep all their... I yeah, looked up to him, I think, so... I'm, I'm really well. thankful for you being here tonight. You're bringing the wine fix and yeah. you're bringing the reality <laughs> TV. And it's like, yeah. thank God. Yeah, yeah. Like tasting wine there and watching... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure he's he's matching the wines with the different <laughs> characters <laughs> and then everything, telling and the girls, the like, well, you should have this, so uh, tonight, doing though, the bus, you know. <coughs> if they're doing the Bush Tucker trails, would you be like, oh, that would go yeah. lovely with yeah. that oh, insect yeah, yeah, now? Yeah, it's been a struggle, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's good fun, yeah, to do that. Nice with a few kangaroo coconuts. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Gleason, thank you for joining me. You're very welcome. Mike, tell me about Down the Road Productions. Uh, we're an independent record label based out of uh, Kildare, and um, we've got a, a foot in Mayo as well. Um, it's a, it's a, how would you say? It's a hard time to be an independent record label at the moment, but uh, it's a passion and something I believe in, and um, I'm very lucky to have this lady beside me on the label. So she's nearly a full-time job looking after her on her own. So, you know, it's busy. <laughs> oh, it's fair. It's actually the music industry at the moment. It's really changed. Um, like you, we spoke before we came on set tonight, like shows and like, that seems to be a big way forward. And I know from Charlie to yourself, you know, like you have a lot of shows coming up even in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, like one very big show on the 27th of yeah. December. So as I'm yeah, having a turkey sandwich, <laughs> you are doing a very big show. Tell me about that show. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be in the Helix. Um, we're lucky enough that we got eight dates opening for the Remembering the Legends with Joe Dolan Christmas Lovely. Party Nights. Yeah. So it's a great show, brilliant show um, of going around the big hotels all around the country. And we're very lucky to be joining for eight dates. And the Helix is one of them on the 27th of December. And I, so I have to wait. say they've been an absolute eye opener for me. You know, because obviously I would have known Joe Donald and Joe Donald's music and I'd seen this legend, you know, in the paper and that. 
But when we went to the first one, the first one we did earlier in the year down in Waterford, mm. I couldn't believe the size of the crowd. Yeah. And they were like so passionate. It, it, it's been unbelievable. It's really, really enjoyable. Yeah. And they're so professional. The whole show is so professional. So. Yeah, it's great night. Yeah. So you're very excited fabulous. for that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely very excited, yeah. You won't have too much time to indulge in Christmas. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no no to no big turkey dinners for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm looking at the two of you there on the couch and it's like such a great partnership. But like, some days. <laughs> <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> no. I don't. But like, how did this partnership come about? Well, do you that was, it, was it a lucky or an unlucky event? We don't it's know. I think it's lucky. <laughs> I th lucky. I, I'd known Cena for a while. From I met Cena one night actually um, playing a place called a Song Room in Dublin. And it's where you get, it's, it's not an open mic, it's, sort of, it's an invitation only type of thing. And I was managing an artist that was playing there. Cena was also playing there. And we just got talking at the end of of that and we had mutual friends so we kind of hung around in the same circles for about five or five months or so before we even started working together and see these keep asking me to come and watch your band and I never true story <laughs> he was playing hard to get <laughs> I like, oh i'm busy come. oh no too oh, i was no, honestly too. i used to feel so bad because anytime cena would say mike we have a gig somewhere i go oh i can't i'm at oh, sorry i'm washing my hair tonight i'm getting like it. Yes. it. <laughs> I'm not watching, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> I was at, at other gigs. You know? yeah. But I eventually, eventually got to see them. And um, yeah, it was like, okay, this, is, this girl has something definitely, you know. And is it a long working relationship? Or is it only, say, recent? Well, we're, well it feels like a long working yeah. relationship because we cram so much in. I don't mean that in, in like, <laughs> it's a hardship planting. I mean we've yeah. done so much we're about 18 months in it's 16 16 months yeah, or so but, that, yeah. I mean the amount of gigs this lady has done during that time I wouldn't say there's too many people in the country that, that match it you know I think last year you did 150 gigs yeah something like that something like oh no no sorry that's, that's, that's not right was it this year I don't know well, I can't remember <laughs> but ridiculous I mean most, most weeks seen it would be anywhere between uh, four to six gigs you know depending and like, do you find, sometimes less, sometimes like, more. say, especially from someone who has a music production company, the change in the music industry, especially in the last two years, I noticed, um, like, to have an impact, like, the music business and sales and how you achieve success these days is comes from all different ag angles. And yeah. Oh, like, it's the, the old school way is, is kind of gone to a degree. But I'd be old school in, in, in heart like and I would think you old could... Old school would be into go to this, you buy the record. Yeah, there's, so now few there's so record many shops. different avenues. So yeah. few record shops now. I mean, we don't even try. There is people out there that we can go to to get the records into the record shops. We actually go down the route of just selling them through. Um, people we know who have shops will put a few CDs, but we sell them at the gigs and we sell lots at the gigs. And apart from being a great singer, she's an absolutely amazing sales lady. Because <laughs> when we, before we had the album, we were selling, I'm going to hang you here now, we used to be selling um, CDs for five or just the, the EPs. And Cena's sort of pitch was, guys, go to the bar, buy yourself a pint, you know, take a tenner out of your pocket, and buy with a change, pint, you can get with the album. change. Then she used to go and tell them, nobody likes change, you'll be going home tonight and that change will fall out of your pocket and you'll get into trouble. Like, <clears throat> honestly, God, I mean, True and, story. Yeah. yeah, so now it's like, take 20 quid out of your pocket, you know, <laughs> well, buy a I'm, pint for it. I'm sure, especially for yourself, from behind the scenes, creating the music together, yeah. and then seeing it as yourself, as like the artist and the performer, you probably prefer going to your gig, doing your show, and then your fans coming up to you afterwards and but purchasing the record and you can maybe tell them how a song came about or mm -hmm. the story of a song. So as a performer, that's probably more rewarding as opposed to someone just buying a record and listening to one or two songs. Yeah, well, I like both. Of course, I have nothing against anyone who <laughs> yeah. wants to go out and buy a record. Very, very welcome. Um, but no, I do love playing live shows. I love as well. I mean, I play more intimate gigs as well, but I do play a lot of high energy gigs kind of. Saturday nights, you know, when I love people getting up to dance and to sing along and um, definitely to come up afterwards for a chat or even I'll go around if I see a table or so that has been particularly singing along and dancing or so enthusiastic, I'll go along and say, hey, thank you so much for a great night because I'll have a great night as well and it makes such a difference for a performer if you're playing 
and you look over and people are singing back to you or they're dancing or do you know like I have like shakers here as you can as you can see I did it earlier as well <laughs> I'll bring these two gigs and um, just bring throw them around the crowd and hope they come back <laughs> at the end of the gig which they usually don't but that's why we got the bigger ones yeah. the smaller ones never come it's my back. biggest expense in a year I think is shakers <laughs> it gets people involved too doesn't it absolutely yeah big. so yeah I, and I have you experience. noticed like it's actually country music it's just out of nowhere become the biggest stream of music at the moment because it was always like pop kind of yeah. mm -hmm. over it like really was a big thing but like now country music artists are really taking center stage and the album sales are doing really well the single sales yeah. but the big thing is that people are willing to go for a night out people want to go for a night yeah. out to see a country music artist and they're really get into their music and you really get them even having a bit of a boogie or yep. they can connect with a song in particular like I know your recent um, song, that was your eight, not one, not two, not three, but like eight number one singles. Yes, it was, yeah. <laughs> like that's a yeah, what an achievement. Really Congratulations. Thanks so much. But that your most recent track, that was something that you came about together. Yep. Yeah, first time we True, wrote yeah. one together. Yeah. Very. I like. How did that come? Like, was this, with, what was the inspiration behind that, or how did that song come about? You. Do you want to tell? Yeah, Do you want me to tell? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. Well. Uh, Mike, for a long time, kind of had an idea sort of for a song knocking around. Um, and he said, well, if I sort of scribble something down, will yeah. you take it and turn it into a song? So, and when I read what he'd scribbled down, I was like, right, um, you know, this is, this, this is not just scribbled down. Like, he's actually really good as mm -hmm. a songwriter. And I keep telling this, and I, I kept telling him, you're really, really good. And he actually is. So, basically, he sent me he sent me his kind of ideas and so on and so then it kind of went back and forth and um came back about to me came, <laughs> came back because he didn't believe himself he was like oh no it's not well, good enough yeah. and i was like come on like finish it he was like oh i don't know what to do and anyway yeah. so no well i kind of the idea behind the song so the song is called share your love this christmas um and it has the idea and the message behind it is for people really to look out for each other um, because a lot of people really look forward to, to Christmas and to the season. Um, but a lot of other people that sometimes are forgotten about really kind of almost dread it. Um, because it's a particularly hard time um, for people that have lost someone that you know, they're missing more than normal. Um, or someone that they're afraid maybe they might not be there um, next Christmas, somebody who could be ill. Um, and so, well, this mm -hmm. is a very personal story um, yeah. to Mike. Um, because, do you, do you want? Yeah, I, I, some years back now, I lost my oldest son. Sorry, and, sure um, Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. But it, every Christmas then is particularly, you know, it's obviously you, you, you miss every day, every, yeah. you know, you do. But come Christmas, there's so many more memories, you know, there's presents under the Christmas tree, there's the Christmas morning that the person's not going to be there. So that's really what the, the song is about. First verse about that. And then he started the second verse in the song was about, which is something that, that gets overlooked as well. So many people go through Christmas wondering, is that person going to be still with them next year even? And that's even worse to a certain, to a certain level. It's uncertainty whether you're ever going to have this moment again. So the song is about that. As, as hard as that subject sounds, the song is not such a dour song. It's a very uplifting song. It's, it's meant to kind of say to people around, people who are who are going through silently suffering, you know, you know, put your arm around them, rem do realise that it might be five years, but they're still feeling the pain as much. It doesn't get easier. There's a line in the song that very clearly states that, so. And a little birdie told me, Cena, you're going to treat us to a performance of Share Your Love This Christmas at the end of the show. I will, I will, yeah, indeed, yeah. Gary, I think you need to go back to the day job now because, um, Paul is empty and <laughs> filling. And so may I yeah. say one thing to Gary? You have just gave me the best excuse I've ever had. He said that wine cleanses the palate. And there was me using Listerine. That's gone out. <laughs> I'm never, ever, ever going to use that. It's going to be wine from now on. Poor Paul, <laughs> poor Paul is looking at the glass That's thinking, will you ever top up? <laughs> Pause. Poor Paul's first drink since last May. Really? Yeah, I just, you know, just kind of got into habit when... In the cafe, and that it oh, goes in the bar sure. trade for years, and the restaurant trade, and the cafe. I suppose just concentration on on business, and just kind of grew out of it really. But I'm enjoying this. You enjoying this? It's a beautiful red wine. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm yep. driving. Hop in. So. Oh, you can't have one. Oh, you <laughs> Hop in yourself, Mike. Oh, I'll have a little bit as well. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll shoot you on okay. it. I'll, so I'll, have the, I'll have the white. I'll, I'll have, have the white. That's good good because it's more right for yeah, me. Yeah, more right for It seems it's been so long. Paul's thinking of taking a takeaway. It's actually You won't be in the cafe at all tomorrow. We apply for the wine license tomorrow. But you know, when you were saying there about the country and restaurant, like the 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 meaning of the song, you know, I think yeah. out of all the music groups and everything like that, I think country and restaurant is really <laughs> from the heart. I feel at mm -hmm. times if you, know? you like sit yeah. back and you listen to like with pop, it's very like, like it's dance, like, yeah. like it's, but with a country music song or a country music artist, if you actually sit back, listen to the, the song lyrically, mm -hmm. it can kind of take you to a place. Um, and it does. You can kind of take you to a memory. May it be good, or may it be bad, yeah. or even an ex a life experience. I feel country music really does we, that. We we have to admit that we're not real country and western. We're country rock, and that's country yeah. rock, That's yeah. what we are. I mean, very different. Now we do have a couple of songs that are we were we've uh, covered Brandy Clark since she gone to heaven, which is the perfect song to describe that genre of of uh, country mm. music. But Cena would be very much more. She's on a mission too. Put rock into Irish, Irish country, country music. Well, like <laughs> that, you've done music for so long now, mm. and like I'm looking at you, and probably what 21, 22. Uh, so yeah. like, you were a friend for life. <laughs> <laughs> and like oh when you must have started musically. Did you come out of the room singing? <laughs> <laughs> probably. Actually, you know what? My grandma, when I was a baby, my grandma used to say, "The way this baby screams, she's going to be a singer." Yeah. So <laughs> it did happen in the end. And like, was your family musical influences to yourself growing up? Like, as you, I, you started at seven years of age, like writing mm -hmm. songs, playing the piano. So mm -hmm. your parents and family definitely influenced you to go towards music. Well, my parents don't play themselves, but they love music. So I've always, as a kid, listened to lots of music and lots of different music. My dad used to have these huge, beautiful speakers that I just absolutely loved sticking my fingers into <laughs> until they broke. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, so, and he loved his, his um, LPs and he loved his record players and everything. Um, so I've listened to a lot of music since I was a kid. My parents don't play. But then again, my mom's side of the family, um, they're very musical. So kind of grandparents and so there's, there is a very musical side of the family. It just kind of skipped my parents. But yeah, to answer your question, when I was seven, I wanted to play piano. So I eventually got a piano. And I think my parents regretted it very soon <laughs> because I probably played the same two songs over and over and over. Um, but, um, I would like to start off so young uh -huh. and like to make the like you moved like ho Germany's home. Mm -hmm. uh, like then you moved, took the decision then to go and see what Spain had to offer. Yeah, well, I was 11, like, back back in the days. My dad is Dutch, actually, to just add to the <laughs> genealogy <laughs> confusion. But well, my dad is Dutch, my mom's German, and uh, I grew up in Hamburg. And then my parents, they always had the dream to move to the south. And when I was 11 and had to squit, switch schools anyway, they said, right, now is the time. And we moved to the south of Spain. So better weather, for sure, than north of Germany. Um, and yeah, and then I lived in Spain, I did school there, I did a college degree and everything. And um, then three years ago, I said, right, um, I'm going to move to Ireland to pursue music. And Mike, I see you very intense thinking there, and I think you've <laughs> gone into the music production head mindset <laughs> no. now. And I think you're thinking, if I was sitting in the middle of the two guys, and the next big boy band. Is that what I think? <laughs> Possibility, yeah. yeah. No, I, think, I think so. Yeah. I, think, I think the world is ready for... Um, mm -hmm. There was a band on, on um, I think it was X Factor a few years ago. They were the dads that were called. I don't know if you remember them. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd done quite well. They actually got, got through a few so, rounds. So do you think we could do something. If yeah. we recorded something, we'd knock ourselves off the top spot? I don't know about that. No, that'd be a bit of a tough... That'd be a bit of a tough ask. Sure, you got your, you know, your first number I, one single no now, matter, so. It's always funny. No matter how many times I heard the scene and telling, that story i always started to go off thinking about all of the the, the different because i mean i hear seeing something she'll answer the phone and she start talking german then she's talking <laughs> then she's talking spanish, spanish. Yeah. then she's fluent yeah, english and then so. there's portuguese in the mix and <laughs> there's dutch in the mix and so I, I keep it's always sort of wonderment of irish we're, we're sort of you know a lot of us are languagely what's the right word we're, we're challenged with our linguistic skills you know we I, we don't have as many languages as the people on the continent, obviously, but it's always, it always just kind of amazes me. I do go off into a little sort of a, damn you, sort of <laughs> place, you know. With all your travelling, Paul, did you pick up the languages yeah, along Spanish, the way? Yeah. Did you, yeah? yeah. yeah. You took I, I think the Spanish, uh, well, I suppose I was seven years in, in Spain, so 
the Spanish just kind of grew me really, you mm. know. Yeah. And do you know what? The best I was I wasn't taught it or anything like that, but it was out socialising, and actually a lot of my friends were Spanish, they spoke English. But when we went out and having drinks, everybody was, and after a while, it just grew into me. That's great. Well, I find especially when I come from being a Barcelona at the weekend, like tapas and what like sangria yes. and wine, it was oh, such yeah. a big thing. Uh, like the food over there was amazing. Like, have, have anyone here been to Barcelona? Yeah, yeah, I was over to Barcelona, yeah. yeah. How did you find it? I love Barcelona. The um, it's 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 a beautiful city, you know. I suppose like you you go travelling. I was in Alicante. We went travelling up. Obviously, you pass Benidorm. You go into Valencia. Valencia is more industrialised, but Barcelona is really the architecture. Everything about it is just atmosphere. You can it's a bit like Paris, really. You know. Yeah. And that you can feel the atmosphere there, and you can yeah. fall in love with the place. Mm. So Paul, it's like, you know, I'm like a, such a foodie, such a <laughs> love my food. But if I was to take a trip into Three Little Piggies now, what are you going to whip me up? Well, we have... What's the uh, signature Three Little Piggies dish? We have ten. Yeah, ten. Yeah, we have, sure. yeah. I, I said, we have uh-huh. seen who... It can't have one number one, so it's just eight <laughs> number one singles. And then you, I, I ask you for a signature dish, and you're like, you we have, have, ten. You have ten. So, so Gary, how many signature wines have you? About 500. 500. <laughs> it's it's a very go. greedy panel tonight. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it's all our beautiful spreads we use, and uh, all our meats are steam cooked by chicken in, but we use them in different various sandwiches. Then classics like the New Yorker, which would be uh, shredded beef, coleslaw, mustard, onion. Uh, we've got Reuben which would be another big name if you go into it. Again, it's uh, pastrami, uh, sauerkraut, thousand dollar dressing, Emmental cheese. I'm catching Cena's attention there, but I'll have that one, please. I see, like, me and Cena are looking at each other there, and we're like, <laughs> oh, we were chatting now. to you before where, where we came on here. Where's all this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, all it's, it's turning the sandwich more into an experience and, 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 and actually a good meal. Mm. Where, did you, with did you good breads, good meats. Did you bring any for us? They wouldn't, nah. Once the breads go beyond six o'clock, you can't use them all. <laughs> oh, I thought I might have been giving you a takeaway like, for your journeys back. I just having like this really good idea of we need to all go have them sandwiches, right? Have some wine brought down that complements the sandwich. Definitely. Cena will play a few tunes. Like, was your mind going yeah. Ma- yeah. crazy there, Gary, when yeah. he was mentioning all the different foods? Oh, yeah, you were like, yeah, what yeah. wine would yeah, go? Yeah, and yeah, certainly. Yeah. Certainly, but um, yeah, there's, there's a, you know, wine is like uh, fashion as well. It's, there's constant trends as well, you know, yeah. and uh, this Christmas, I suppose. This rapace style from Italy would be an example of, of a trend that's really on cue right now, you know, as is Pinot Grigio, but upmarket Pinot Grigio is Prosecco, Argentinian Malbec. Prosecco you has know? become very big in huge, the last yeah, couple of years. Huge. Like especially yeah. and like, I feel like if I'm having an occasion now I feel like I have to buy a bottle of Prosecco like to <laughs> yeah, know it's yeah. so uh, you know, Prosecco starts at nine ninety nine now this Christmas for a presenting, you know. Very, and you know, is that the yeah. So oh. like, they're very reasonable with slight bit of pressure on them. So I think yeah. over the last twenty years I think the Irish have grown up big time with yeah. uh, considering their palates, their taste mm. and everything. Like they won't accept a, a substandard wine. You yeah, know. Uh, you know, standard. They, want, they like their, their good yeah, wines, yeah. they like their taste, they know what they yeah. like. Yeah. They won't accept a, a bad sandwich anymore. They won't accept a bad coffee yeah. anymore. Coffee culture in Cork has become huge. Yeah, as yeah. Well. Of course. Yeah. It's the whole yeah. thing. The Irish palate has changed so mm-hmm. much over the last 20 years. Yeah. And uh, for the better. And for the better, yeah. yeah. yeah people for know the what they want. Exactly. And they expect a certain standard. And that's that keeps everyone on their toes. And we all have to react to that, which is good. See you Share your love this Christmas. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Absolutely. I'm not sharing this red wine anyway. No. <laughs> it's too nice. No, uh, guys, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks Lovely to meet you all. Pleasure. Been a pleasure. Um, pleasure. Gary O'Donovan, yeah. O'Donovan's off license. Thank you. Paul Walsh, Three Little Piggies. Cena, Miss iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Lisa. Thank you very guys, much. Guys, thanks for joining me tonight. We have an amazing competition on tonight, guys. Um, from the foodie of like so you have to go to cockball so you have to all experience the cockball feeling so we are giving away a lunch for two to cockball but in order to be eligible to be entered into the draw you need to like tag who you're going to bring with you and share tonight's episode of the show but guys i'm going to finish up the show tonight eight number one singles take it away cena teal Thank you so much. Well, here it goes. Share your love this Christmas. Share your love this Christmas with ones who feel the pain. The ones who try this time of year, cause nothing ever be the same. 
Your picture looks down on the Christmas tree. There's a hole in my world where your presence used to be. A season of joy, love, and giving. But I can't help to look around just to find that you're missing. And people say times are in love, but to me it's nothing but a smile stealing. Your people think that I just moves on, but it don't get easier the more you're gone. Shame. To feel the pain, the ones who dread this time of year, cause nothing ever be the same. Shame you left this Christmas with the ones who give it all. all. I do hope that life is once again in their arms. Your mother looks down at her son beneath the Christmas tree. Wondering what will tell the family. She's always been their hero, standing tall and strong. Now, how is he supposed to deal with the life to find and come? And all his fear and anguish, he'll hide inside. Cause that's the way a man should be to keep his pride. When every day's a battle, He'll keep his family close And fight until the fight is done To watch his son grow old She had half this Christmas With the ones who feel the pain and the ones who dread this time of the year Cause everything could change She had half this Christmas With the ones who give it all, all And to hold that life this once again in the arms to hold that love this once again in the arms the mother looks down at her son beneath the Christmas tree his little hands reach out to where his presence will be his body is worn from healing but she won't stop she won't stop believing Cause every day's a battle that they have won And she would fight the world at home for her son When every day's a battle and when hope looks gone Her smile gives her the strength to fight Until the fight is done She have this Christmas with the ones who feel the pain The ones who dread this time of the year Cause everything could change She had half this Christmas With the ones who give it all, all And to hold that love once one more year In their arms To hold that love once one more year In their arms And when did empathy become so empty? Caring became a job When you live your life not helping those who need you Tell me, do you live at all? So spare a thought this Christmas For the ones who feel the pain The ones who try this time of year Cause nothing ever be the same she left this Christmas with the ones who give it all, all to hold that left once one more year in their arms. So, guys, you're here to hear. Share your love this Christmas. Sheena to you. Thanks so much. Well done. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Glad you enjoyed it. No, amazing. <laughs> enjoyed it. Amazing. Thanks for joining me, guys. Catch me next week, 8.30, Cork tonight, Graham Craig Cruz.